says young people. There's no definition of young people. So a time for young people, I know what the girls have said they'll come down. And you get to enjoy the children's message. Because I prepare you. This robe to come on out. Who's read The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe? All right. All right. It's wonderful stuff. It's uh, J.R.R. Uh, I'm sorry, C.S. Lewis. I'm so I'm going to talk, I'm going to refer to Tolkien later. But Lewis writes, it's a parallel to Christ's gifts. And so he talks about uh, here's this lion. And if the kids are here, I can pull out. I brought my son's toy box. He's 30 years old now. Um, so, was he a small lion? Maybe not. So, he was a little bit bigger than that. Maybe bigger than that. Maybe even bigger than that. He was a big lion. And so, the, the amazing part was that these four children would cross over into this land of Narnia. And they were uh, Lucy and Susan and Peter and Edmund. And every time they would see Aslan, he got a little bit bigger. Maybe just like seeing the, going from the beanie baby to a real stuffed animal. And Edmund turned out to be kind of not as good as the other kids. And he got into cahoots with the White Witch. And he betrayed the children to Aslan betrayed Ashland. And the rule of Narnia was that he, somebody had to die as a sacrifice. Well, just like Jesus took our sacrifice, Aslan chose to step in the place for Penny. And the white witch thought she had him. And so she gets all her creepy friends to tie him up. And they tie him up. And he lets them tie him. At first they're terrified of him. Because one of his paws, Lewis says, could wipe them away. And so he ties them up. I found the stone table this morning. So <clears throat> he places them on the stone table. And meanwhile, Lucy and Susan are watching all this. And they're just awful. And it's amazing. You know, I'm reading it fresh a couple of days ago. I'm going, you know, I read this to my kids. This is pretty terrifying stuff. <laughs> and the white witch kills him with her death And of course, Lucy and Susan are just distraught. They don't know what to do with themselves, and they hang around all night. And the next morning, the sun comes up, and their birds are singing. And they hear noise, and they, and they see these mice come up, and they think, oh, how terrible. But what they've done is they come up, and they undo all the ropes. And they think, well, what things I can do? And then all of a sudden, they see they shaved his mane off, kind of like this, and it grew back. And they, they didn't know what to make of it, and they turned away. And all of a sudden, they heard this loud boom. And the stone table had cracked in two. And they turned, and Aslan was gone. And they thought, oh no, where have they taken Aslan's body? And Aslan came back, and he said, I'm not dead any longer. But they said, we saw you get killed. And he said, the witch knew of the deep magic. The deep magic was that when somebody betrays another, someone must die. But she didn't know the deeper magic. And the deeper magic was that when a willing person dies for someone else, death begins to work backwards. And he says, oh, I'm beginning to feel good. And he's been against the romp. And he says it was the greatest romp ever. And they weren't sure if it was like an earthquake or a thunderstorm. But Lucy and Susan roll around and they tumble. And, and it's off to the adventures of the rest of the books of the Chronicles of Narnia. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll refer to that again in a moment. This deeper magic that is real. And that's the amazing thing about a story like that is that, yes, it parallels what is real, but there's such great imagery in there that we can, we can learn something from. 
So I, I mentioned J.R.R. Tolkien, who wrote The Lord of the Rings. And I first read The Hobbit when I was in fourth grade, and a few years ago. And uh, since then, of course, they made the movie. And there's, there's one scene in there I want to remind you of. This is right at the beginning of The Hobbit. And Gandalf, this large uh, wizard, puts a mark on the outside of Bilbo's door. And what happens is all these dwarves start coming by, 13 of them, and they let themselves in. And if you've seen the movie, they just kind of terrorize his house and they eat all this food, and Bilbo just doesn't know what to do with himself. And so then there's a conversation with Gandalf and Bilbo. And Gandalf said, the world's not in your books and maps. It's out there. Bilbo says, well, I can't just go running off into the blue. I'm a bag and some bag end. But you're also a took. Did you know that your great, 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 great uncle Borrower took was so large that he could ride with a horse? Yes. Well, they could. In the battle of the green fields, he charged the goblin ranks. He swung the club so hard and knocked the goblin heads clean off. And it sailed in the air a hundred yards and went down a rabbit hole. And thus the battle was won. And the game of golf was invented at the same time. <laughs> Bilbo said, I think you just made that up. And Gandalf said, well, all good stories need a bit of embellishment. And you'll have a tale of, to tell of your own when you come back. And Bilbo says, do you promise that I'll come back? And Gandalf says, no. And if you do, The adventure of the Christian faith doesn't need embellishment. It's a great story. Some have called it a love story. It's a story of battles. It's a story of sacrifice. A story of, some would say, mythical proportions. It's not a myth. Men and women have preceded us for 2,000 years, risking their lives, some losing their lives for his name's sake, but none remain the same. As some would believe that this is all there is, singing hymns and sitting in pews. And there's a place for that. We can come and, and, and this we call this worship, but there are other forms of worship. And there are other things that we do with our lives. And oftentimes it encompasses real danger. Maybe the only danger that we might face is a danger to our, our reputation. Maybe a danger to our wallets as we risk giving money to religious causes 